Hello, welcome to Kelly's Art Throb. I'm Kelly, and today, the day I'm doing this voiceover, is Memorial Day. Here in the U.S., Memorial Day is when we honor the soldiers and service people who didn't come back from the war that they were serving in. Through sheer dumb luck and fortune, we don't have anyone in our family who died in war but we do have veterans and fortunately they're still with us. And while I was doing this neurographic art, I was thinking about them and basically all of the people who've gone before me in my family. During breakfast, my younger son and my husband and I have been having a lot of really fascinating conversations and uh, just due to the nature of Memorial Day, we started talking about um, my brother-in-law's experiences and he just recently began to uh, describe and, and talk about his experiences in Vietnam. And my husband started telling our younger son Stretch about all these experiences. While he was recounting these things, it occurred to me that each generation becomes sort of the repository of oral tradition and family history for the previous generations. And I told that to my son. I said, it's, it's both an honor and a responsibility. I started to tell a tale that my Aunt Virginia told me about when she was young like in grade school, and they went to a one-room schoolhouse, and she and her sisters, my other aunts, and her my mother, uh, walked to school every day, and they would stick together, and they would kill snakes that they came across, and then sing hymns over them. I seem to remember her uh, talking about this worn path that they went down, and all the trees and then kind of a disturbing thought came to me because I've been thinking about memory and how unreliable memory is and I used to think that memory was something that was sort of kept in a biochemical um, file cabinet kind of in a central location but um, my understanding now that I have is that it actually your memories are sort of split up into the different sensory inputs and emotional inputs like um, things that you remember regarding what they sounded like go in like an audio place in your brain and um, the visual things go in a visual cortex and then and then your everything is just com connected through neural uh, connections but the thing about memory is that every time you remember, you sort of edit the memory because when you're remembering, you're also having the current sensations of um, sight, sound, smell, who you're around, what you're thinking about while you're having the memory. And it just naturally edits the memory. And then I started thinking, well, what if I, first of all, I wasn't there when my aunt was having, was she's retelling her own experience and I wasn't there. So she's remembering the scene the way she remembers it, which may or may not be exactly accurate, but at least she was there. And so she's probably remembering elm trees or maple trees, I don't know. And when she's telling me the story, I'm trying to make sense of it and visualize it. And I'm visualizing a scene that's probably very different than the scene she's remembering. Do you know what I mean? 
So not only do we edit our own memories, then the oral tradition and the oral histories that are given to us by our elders are edited simply by the very fact that we weren't there and we have to sort of relate to what they're telling us and the way we do that is through our own projecting our own experiences into that story and that really started to blow my mind because I hadn't put it together with how bigger history gets distorted through a lack of context and differences in culture, society, dogma, and changes even in linguistic connotations. I just never thought about how all of that combines with personal family history. And it freaked me out a little. And it further freaked me out because guess what happens when we retell these things? We're trying to tell them in a way that the person we're telling can relate to them. And their context, their experiences are different than ours. So even in the retelling, the memory gets distorted. Then they try to relate to it and they're envisioning something completely different. So our oral traditions and oral histories, I wonder how in the past, before we had written history and everything was oral, how messed up are those memories? It reminds me of that childhood game where one per it started, there's a story, and one person whispers it to the next person, and then that person whispers it to the next person, and after that happens 15 times, the story is completely different. And I guess that's kind of what's freaking me out a little bit, but I'm getting over it, you guys. It's been that way for millennia, right? And I mean, you know, we're still here. We're still remembering. We're still recounting our family histories. And maybe the Maybe the main part of it is that we still remember them. Okay, so now I'm just gonna talk about the artwork here and it's neurographic art. Um, a lot of times I told you I'm working on skill building and I like to have sort of a structure for that and I didn't wanna do anything as uh, tightly structured as a mandala. I really am enjoying using these organic lines and shapes and the neural connections. I'm really kind of into it and I'm not trying to make strict neurographic art. It's just a really good vehicle for practicing things like um, these very layered washes. And what I found while I was doing this is that if you can get these layers super even and super consistent. They lay a foundation for something that's really graphic and kind of cool. Even though I, I wouldn't like to say that this artwork in particular is like a, you know, God, I hate to keep saying masterpiece, but it's, it's not really supposed to be finished art. It's play. It's drilling, it's, uh, you know, skill building, all those things that I keep harping about, uh, because it's really, that's what I'm doing lately. And, uh, but what was unexpected about this was just how graphic it all comes across, kind of like it was printed on a printer, you know, and the colors were done digitally. And until recently, I've never been able to get that much consistency. And it's kind of exciting, you know, it's it's cool. In case you want to try this, I'm using Arches paper and I've also had pretty good luck recently with Windsor and Newton Professional hot press paper. But keep in mind, companies change their formulations all the time. So you just kind of have to try and see what works. Um, but, but right now, currently, those are the two papers that I like the best. I mean, for, for 
um, ink and line and wash using ink and then these kind of washes. I like cold press paper, but not for this application. For me, just my perspective. Take it for whatever it's worth to you, okay? <laughs> I'm not trying to be an authority. The other thing that I'm using that I like for this application is highly staining paints. Like for this, I used Thalo Turquoise, Thalo Green, uh, Nickel Yellow Azo. I think those were the main ones. Um, and they're highly staining. So when you put them down and you have paper that absorbs the fluid and the, the pigment, um, then you've got a nice foundation for the next layer. I'll put a link in the description to all the things that I use, like the ink, um, the pen holder, the, or the nib holder, the, the nibs. I mean, they're kind of, they're really standard, but just in case you want to try any of this, I'll, um, I'll put all that information in the description. I didn't actually finish this. I got so far with it and I went, you know, I've got everything out of it that I want to get out of it and I'm going to leave a little potential to add something or experiment a little bit more later. Anyway, in other news, we got our fence fixed. It's done. So, <laughs> well, we're going to grill some hamburgers on the grill on the patio and enjoy our backyard. And for this Memorial Day weekend, it hasn't, it hasn't uh, rained, usually it does. And so we're going to enjoy our outdoor space and um, I'm going to leave you with that. So I hope you guys have had a good Memorial Day um, and that you got a break from your work and whatever else you have going and just got to spend it with family and remembering people who've gone before you that you love and at any rate you guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. And hey, thanks a lot for spending your time with me. And I'll see you in the next video, you guys. Smooches. Bye-bye.